here I thought we'd make it through 2023 with only two of these expansions, yet here we are. It's The Sims 4 For Rent, the 15th expansion pack, which sounds like a joke, but it's true. The kind of flippant remarks I used to make years ago, like, ooh hoo hoo, this is the 15th expansion, eh, that's now reality. An expensive reality, with the cost of expansions alone now totaling $600. And the overall price of a complete Sims 4 with all the other packs is unbelievable. I stopped buying that other stuff years ago, but I still come back for full expansions. Not only to cover on LGR, but also because I genuinely hope one does something special enough to become immersed in the game again. So, let's see what For Rent does for me, for better or for worse. And as the name implies, For Rent is primarily focused on residential rentals, both as a tenant and as a property owner. Or both, you can live in your own rental unit if you wish. But either way, apartments are now a thing in The Sims 4. Again, for the third time now, since they were already reintroduced in city living like eight years ago, and to a lesser degree in eco-lifestyle. This time, they're the same, but different, since apartments can be owned and rented out by you, the player, instead of a random landlord sim that was more like a glorified repairman. It also means you get to build and customize apartment buildings from the ground up, along with being able to run rental units on any residential lot in the game. Some fine additions indeed, the kind of thing I think I wished for back when I covered city living, I think. <laughs> I can't believe this dang game is old enough for me to completely forget what I said in previous reviews, but anyway, apartments are more involved. And to facilitate that comes a new world to explore, Tamarang. A Southeast Asia-inspired coastal village with two neighborhoods, Morinsong and Koh Sapa. One of the nicer looking, but undeniably smaller worlds I recall seeing in an expansion with only nine playable lots, three of which are completely empty. And sure, it's good to have blank space to build on as you please, but here it comes at the expense of more pre-built lots to enjoy right off the bat. There is one that you can place, but we know for a fact that way more than nine lots is doable and a bigger map would be welcome. Speaking of trade-offs, the non-residential public lots are nothing special. First is a botanical gardens area that sure looks nice, but there's nothing much to do except sit in a gazebo and eat wieners. Second is a street vendor slash open market area that, yeah, looks great and gives off bustling nighttime activity energy, but in reality, most of it's non-interactive, with only a handful of vendors selling the expected allotments of ingredients and food. And then there's the temple, the fish market, and the tiger sanctuary, which again, have a pretty sweet aesthetic going on, zero complaints in the looks department. But they're nothing more than rabbit holes, an object for sims to enter and disappear inside of, then click on some interactive text choices sometimes. Stimulating. The tiger adoption service at the sanctuary is disappointing too, it's only a donation box supporting invisible tigers sims never see in-game. Though you do get a stuffed tiger plushie and a poster to take home, ooh, game-changing stuff. Even the Tuk Tuks are a quirkily featureless letdown since they're non-interactive and function as nothing more than yard ornaments. The ones you see driving around town? You can't use them. No one can. They're driven by the ghosts of better Sims games. Alright, enough complaining, for the moment at least. Because the rental bits in For Rent are something I was immediately intrigued by. Anytime a Sims game lets me manage a business, I am on board. And in this pack, that means purchasing a rental lot and taking on tenants, with either the whole building being rented by a single household, or dividing up sections of a building into individual units. And each unit has its own traits, and a rating, based on a number of factors that can change over time. Now, presumably the goal is to provide as comfortable and pleasing a place as possible for your tenants, but not me! I'm much more interested in grimy, gross cesspits with dirty walls, poltergeists, and well-worn appliances. To that effect, I really enjoyed spicing up the place with dubious stains, exposed brickwork, and filthy, filthy walls. Plus the new fuse boxes, water heaters, AC units, and radiators, it all helps give rentals a bit of well-worn personality. 
and it fits in with the fixer-upper items included in the city living apartments of the past. I don't know, it's just a twisted kind of fun playing a skeevy landlord. And I like that the pack pushes back against that. Not just with unit ratings, but with maintenance events that need addressing, either by your sim going on-site to do repairs, or by calling up contractors. You can also completely cheap out or ignore this stuff to maximize profits and solidify your sim as a dreadful individual, providing no more than the bare minimum, overcharging on rent and being ridiculous with rental agreement rules. Once tenants get so fed up that they start protesting your scummy practices, you can make promises to fix things, empty or not, or skip all that and give an eviction notice that wrongfully puts them out on the street. Or even abuse your landlord privileges further by either eavesdropping or rummaging through tenants' stuff. Both can uncover secrets this sims understandably don't want exposed, which lets you blackmail them for some quick, dirty money. Things can even get so bad that apartments start growing mold and get tenants sick to the point of experiencing a horrible and preventable demise. I know this is all awful, but that's why I'm amused that it's here. This type of garbage behavior is not what we normally get in The Sims 4. Playing the bad guy is rare, and honestly, I'm just happy to see something different. Of course, you can go the total opposite route as well, being the kindest, most helpful, and generous property manager possible, keeping secrets instead of blackmailing, providing prompt in-person maintenance, commending tenants on good behavior, and holding potlucks and pool parties that the whole neighborhood can enjoy. For what fun that is. Eh, either way, the close-knit communal feel of things provided by everyone living so close together is kinda cool, and the new shared spaces within lots just adds to that. Whether your neighbors love or hate you, there's always something going down from dawn till dusk. And even beyond if your sim's down for a little B&E. Yes, break-ins are now a thing, despite burglars still not existing, at least not in NPC form, now you get to be the burglar. Put on your best Gordon Freeman attire and smash things with a crowbar till you get inside, where you have free reign to snoop around for secrets, eat their food, clog their plumbing, and pee on their rug, even if it really tied the room together. And Sims with the kleptomaniac trait can happily steal stuff too. Good times all around, at least until you get caught. So don't get caught, just teleport home through a loading screen. Yeah, loading screens. They're always a thing in The Sims 4, but their prevalence is truly on display in this pack. Since you can't view all apartments on a lot at once during normal gameplay, there's a loading screen between each one. So, visit next door, loading screen. Head up the stairs, get a loading screen. Walk across the street, get another loading screen. And, of course, Sims' actions reset after every load, making it feel extra dumb to knock on your neighbor's door, only to get a loading screen and then have to knock again just to say hi to someone real quick. It really messes with the community feel of things, where it could actually be enjoyable to casually walk between multiple apartments on a lot to hang out or perform maintenance or whatever, but with a three-unit building, there's at least that many loading screens made up of multiple disconnected instances. This stuff just feels more clunky and outdated than ever. Uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? Uh, well, the usual selection of hairs and clothes and things. There's a solid number of comfy-looking attire befitting the more tropical climate. Also falling in line with that are aspirations specific to this pack with Fount of Tamarani Knowledge, Seeker of Secrets, Five Star Property Owner, and Discerning Dweller, and of course, new traits exist. You've got Nosy and Generous, Child of the Village for some local actions, Wise exclusively for Elder Sims, and Cringe which makes Sims go around randomly dabbing and spouting old memes, basically making them act like it's still 2014, the same year this game came out, which I think means The Sims 4 itself is cringe, but who am I to judge? Another few things worth mentioning, I guess, are the new activities of hopscotch and marbles, providing something fresh for Sim kids to enjoy for the first time in a good while. And another new activity is smuggling spirit houses, which has got to be an oversight, right? You're supposed to just make fruit and incense offerings, but Sims can straight up put the whole object in their pants and place them anywhere in the world, despite their size. 
There are also new types of household objects, like squat toilets, electric kettles, and slow cookers. Those last two I find quite nice to see, since I use them both in real life absolutely all the dang time. Really, all the new food and drinks in general are awesome here. If there's something these expansions consistently do right, it's the huge variety in regional cuisine. And lastly, chairs. This pack has them. Four chairs proper, plus a poof, and a couple of stools. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got to say about those. And that is The Sims 4 for rent. The 15th $40 expansion pack as we approach the 10th year of this game existing. And I don't know, it's fine. It does some neat things and hasn't caused a huge ruckus. It once again feels like it could have been a lower priced game pack instead of a $40 expansion. Mostly what it does is augment the existing apartments and provide new ways for Sims to be a scumbag, while offering yet another pretty to look at but underwhelming world. Other than the rare surprise, like being able to kill renters with mushrooms, The Sims 4 at this point is downright predictable. And I think it should go away <laughs> to make room for the future. But that ain't happening, not while it's still as popular and profitable as it is, with over 70 million players worldwide. So yeah, no matter how disenchanted I am with it, this is the status quo now. Tons of folks continue to play this decade-old game and seem happy to hand over $40 for mostly average expansion packs. If you're one that's genuinely still into this, I'm genuinely happy for you. I wish I still was. But I'm not, and this latest pack unfortunately hasn't inspired me to return to this game for very long. So it goes. And that's it for LGR in 2023. There's some fresh video silliness in the works for the coming year, so I hope you stick around for that. And in the meantime, there's a ton more for your viewing pleasure here on LGR. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>